All right, daily topic time. How you doing, everybody? Let's break down the subtleties of the games people play. Now, right at the top, the run of no-hitters in Major League Baseball this year. Don't tell me it's because baseball players are off the juice. Because let's be realistic, as I told you before, there are still baseball players using designer roids that cannot be detected through normal drug testing. That being said, Matt Garza, Tampa Bay Rays, no-hits Jim Leland and the Detroit Tigers last night. That's the Tigers without Ordonez, without Guillen, without Inge. Right now, they look like Washington at Valley Forge. By the way, you have to go back to 1991 to find a year in which there were five no-hitters. And by the way, 91 closed with a grand total of seven no-hitters. Uh, I'm told his net worth is $225 bucks, and I can't buy that for one reason. His record catalog alone has got to be worth, I would think, $500 million. Anyway, we missed this yesterday. Belated birthday greetings to Sir Mick Jagger, who turned, are you ready for this, 67 years young. And how vividly I recall a young Mick Jagger telling his audience at one time, I would rather be dead than sing Satisfaction after the age of 30. Uh, Mick, while we say happy birthday, are you aware of the fact that Satisfaction is now 45 years old? This guy, in my opinion, always led the nation in one category, receiving bad advice. He led the Ohio State Buckeyes to a national title back in uh, 2002. Do you remember the name Maurice Claret? Wanted to leave the Ohio State campus, jumped to the National Football League, found out he was a half step slow. Well, Claret is finally out of stir after having done three and a half years in the joint on weapons and uh, robbery charges. Guess what? He's re-enrolled at Ohio State where he is studying ecology, and he says he hopes he will not be a distraction to the football team. Uh, Maurice, with all due respect, 19-year-old kids had the education span of a turtle. 19-year-old kids don't even know who Maurice Claret is. All right, this guy, in my opinion, broke the code. It's a code I believed in 30 years ago. It's a code I still believe in today. Dallas Cowboys working out the other day. Roy Williams tells rookie Des Bryant, the boys' first overall pick, to carry his shoulder pads after practice. Bryant says, no, I'm here to play football. I don't carry shoulder pads. Well, let me tell you something. That's part of rookie indoctrination, like standing up on a chair at the training table, singing your alma mater, like bringing donuts for the walkthrough on Saturday morning. Rookies do those things. Hey, Des, with all due respect, I saw Walter Payton carry shoulder pads. Carry the shoulder pads. Now, here is the great irony in this story. Des Bryant may well replace Roy Williams, the former Detroit Lion, in the Dallas Cowboys starting lineup. You know, this was so gosh darn pathetic, I don't even know why I'm giving it the time of day. Did you see Carlos Zambrano's heartfelt apology on ESPN about his conduct at U.S. Cellular Field during that Cubs-Sox game when he was ready to pound lumps on Derek Lee? Uh, Carlos, wouldn't it have been a little bit more appropriate to apologize to your teammates before you go on television, before you go on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. You know what this tells me? The anger management, the uh, renovation of Carlos Zambrano, it's going absolutely nowhere fast. Hey, if I'm a Cub right now, I'm not in the mood to accept an apology from Carlos Zambrano, and I guarantee you, before the year runs out, given the fact that right now the Cubs can't give Carlos Zambrano away, he will do something that will further disrupt the already dysfunctional Chicago National League Ball Club. Ah, Capic's pick film of the day, another Michael Mann classic. We go back to 1981. This film starred James Caan, along with the immortal Robert Prosky, Tuesday Weld, and Jim Belushi, who, by the way, for this film, had to weigh 425 pounds. Now, in this particular scene, you see Robert Prosky in the role of Leo, a major big-time, big-city fence lecturing at his pet thief, James Conn. I mean, this is really bad to the bone material. You know what, for a few seconds, let's just check it out. Back to work, Frank. The film breaks down to really one major component. Somehow, Frank, James Conn, is trying to maintain his self-esteem, his self-respect, and his ability to go forward while working for a guy who has absolutely no feeling for him whatsoever other than his role of being a thief. Over the years, the film did no box office in the States. However, in Europe, it is regarded as a cult classic. All right, here we go. It's that time again. Reading from my best-selling book, Fat Guys Shouldn't Be Dancing at Halftime. What's not to like about Pat Fitzgerald as head coach in Northwestern? 
Patrick, you're not to like as the head football coach at Northwestern. Let me tell you why. I understand your loyalty. I understand your commitment to the school. You're a marvelous young head coach. You have a great ability to motivate. You are a brilliant football player. But you know what, Pat, get with the program. You're never going to play for a national title at Northwestern. You want the truly big bucks. You want to play for a national title. You got to go to a football factory. Hey, I know you got a brand new deal from the Wildcats. I know it's healthy. I know you love living in Evanston, but think about a football factory. Pat Fitzgerald could eventually wind up in the uh, College Hall of Fame once again. He's already in as a player. He could wind up going in as a coach. All right, you know what? I just love these guys. Seems hard to believe they've been around for what? 16, 17 years. We go back to about 94, 95. Pearl Jam with their classic even flow. Now, here I want to remind you, don't forget, coming up on Friday, anything can happen day. No, it's question day. Give me your questions on Facebook. Any sports, any pop culture topic you want to talk about, we're only going to have one or two normal daily topics. The rest is going to be a Q&A. This is Talk Radio comes to the web, courtesy of my executive producer. Remind me to get some polygraph. Courtesy of our executive producer, Chris Shaw. And, hey, check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Facebook on a daily basis. Maggie, I don't like you laughing at me. I'm very, very sensitive. We'll be back again tomorrow. Hopefully, my dentures will be in place. Until then, peace, love, and Eddie Vedder. So long, everybody.